Well, good morning, Cadre. Um, I'm in my garage, <laughs> getting ready to uh, leave for work for the day. Um, and as I was sitting, um, getting ready, and I didn't record my shave, I was thinking to myself, I'm doing this Gillette Aristocrat versus the Timeless Razor. And if people look back on these videos, or if they look, or if you're, you know, if that's how you're following along on the forum, I felt like I was really doing you guys a disservice if I didn't at least give you some form of a video update. Um, so, I know it's a little dark. It is before 5.30 a.m. on Thursday when I got to be into work. So what that means is, is that the video quality, I'm not going to guarantee, is the best. Um, but I'm assuming that those of you guys that watch shave videos, you're probably very similar to me. Yes, you'll watch technique, you'll watch things along those lines, but for the most part, um, you're listening. I mean, that's the way it is for me. So for instance, I'm in my office, I have the video up, and it's down in the corner on one of my screens and I usually am just listening while I'm conducting my business unless somebody comes in. So sometimes um, a video could take me significantly longer to um, watch. So anyways, to the shave, today was the Aristocrat. Um, it was day two with the Aristocrat. The setup was the exact same. The only difference was is that I switched out the soap. So my, some of you might be wondering, well, how is this going to be a valid test if you're switching out the soap? I am of the belief system that I've been shaving long enough this way that it doesn't make that big of a difference to me. Um, I can still bring out the qualities of a brush, bring out the qualities of a razor, and I don't need to pay as much attention to what style of soap I'm using. So anyways, I did use a really good performing soap because I'm continuing my tour of the Utah soap. So I used the Beehive um, Sandalwood, the last of the scents from Beehive that I have not used yet. And I'll be honest with you, it is my least favorite scent. Um, it's a very sweet sandalwood. It reminds me of baked cookies honest with you, as weird as that might sound. Um, but anyway, so that's that's what I use. So the Aristocrat, one of the things that I noticed is, is upon doing some research is, is that there are a lot of different versions and styles of the Aristocrat out there. I, I had no idea. Um, so I found that kind of interesting. It does seem like that there's a pretty common consensus on the stuff that I was reading amongst my Google searches that if it is from, if it's a British aristocrat, it is more rare. I don't know why, I don't understand why, but that be that the case. And the number 16 is held in some of the higher regard, although it does seem like if you can get an open comb aristocrat, and I hope I'm doing this right, I'm not claiming to be an expert on Gillette history, um, because I'm not, um, so, I, 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 don't know, um, I'm gonna try and turn off the flash on the phone, see if that helps, let me pause you real quick, oh, we're committed to it, all right, it's too dark if I turn the flash off. So my commute time to work is usually around 15 minutes. Um, in the morning, it's a little bit earlier, a little bit quicker. I don't have to get on any freeways. I don't have to do anything along those lines. It's a straight shot. It is seven miles from home, seven to eight, depending on if I divert myself due to traffic, which usually I don't hit this early in the morning. So. I figured that's why it was safe to uh, to do the recording. Plus, I, I've done this before. Um, I'm used to having my phone up over there where it's at with maps up when I'm commuting to all the different high schools throughout the whole state of Utah. 
so it's not a real distraction to me. So, but I'm not going to be looking at the camera. So, anyways, the history of the Arist of the Gillettes, I'm not into it. Um, I, I mean, I respect the history. I respect how beautiful the razors are. I own a couple. When I go and my wife and I are out shopping and if we stop and there's an antique store, she knows me, I love to stop and look because of all the different things that I like to collect. Um, I'm also into, some of you guys, I don't think I've ever mentioned this in any shaving forum, I'm also into vintage camping gear. Um, Coleman, particularly. I love the old Coleman lantern, stuff along those lines. So when I go to a thrift store, or when I go to a, um, you know, antique store, I usually look for Coleman gear, I look for um, shaving gear, and I also look for, which is usually not as common, but anything numismatics related. So anyway, back to the, back to the razor. So this razor is beautiful. And upon my research, and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, please do, but from my understanding is, is that this Gillette number 16 British um, straight bar, not open comb, I, obviously you guys should know that from the pictures and from the videos so far, is rhodium plated. From my understanding, this is basically ahead of its time as far as the uh, shaving scene goes, you know, back during that time, I think that's what caused it to actually have a higher price point as well when it was being sold um, as brand new. Um, so I think that's really cool, but I think that's also, rhodium is also what's giving it its really great shine. Like, guys, I, I clean my gear usually off camera pretty intensively. I have a very soft bristle toothbrush that I usually take to the razors. I, I want to take care of them. I want these to be able to pass it on. And when I'm using a razor that's not mine, I'm definitely going to be doing that. This razor holds no water spots, and my water is extremely hard. Holds no water spots. It cleans so well. I'm able to take the brush to it ever so lightly and just give it a quick once over. It, it dries beautifully. It doesn't require any additional wipe down. It's just a beautiful razor. Um, I, I really like it. It's, it's really neat. Really, really neat. So, I'm getting to this point where I'm torn for Chris because I want to take this video in two approaches. And that approaches, and I've I've got to go back and look at the prices. I think it was over over two hundred dollars that I spent on my timeless. I can't even remember. I'm so bad, and I haven't been back to the website because I know if I go back to the website, I'm going to buy that other base plate. And I, to be honest with you, I really don't think I need it. But I think it was around two fifty. So let's say. And, and this is not out of the realms of possibility. So let's say that you've got the ability to spend $250 on a Gillette Aristocrat number 16 in this condition, which is damn near perfect. Ooh, sorry. It's pretty much perfect. Or buy a brand new Timeless Razor. Stainless steel version. That's what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the other versions that they're now making and selling. Stainless steel version. I don't know, guys. So two approaches I'm taking at it. That approach, where, where would you rather spend the $250? And the second approach is, is more geared and more specific for Chris, but it's, he already has one. He, he already either, and I'm not, I don't remember the origin story, he either invested the money and already got it, or he lucked upon it at a really great deal. Regardless, that shouldn't matter. So his option is, I've already got it. Do I really need a timeless razor? Um, 
I'll tell you right now from a personal collection standpoint, only you can answer that. But shave quality wise, I'll be 100% honest, out of all the Gillettes that I've used, Max, Flare Tips, Slims, um, Fat Boys, Open Combs, the Long Combs, those Army Ranger Techs, those little tiny uh, travel ones like what uh, Dangerous Don used in his very first video on the Shaving Cadre website. I've used all of those. Um, the Aristocrat has given me the best shave out of any Gillette. Like normally when I use um, another Gillette razor, I have to do multiple passes on my neck. I mean multiple. Guys, I did two passes and a little bit of cleanup was time to be fair to the Gillette. I'm, I'm BBS and it's pretty much effortless. It's pretty crazy how effortless it is to get a BBS shave with that razor. I mean, I'll be honest. When Chris would use this razor and he would talk about how great the shave was, I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, uh-huh, you're talking it up. And I think we're all guilty of it at times. We talk up gear that we love um, for whatever reason. And I'm like, yeah, you're talking it up. I got to be honest, he's not. It's a great, great razor. Um, I want one. <sighs> Which sucks that I want one. So, yeah, it, that's kind of where I'm at with the, with the razor. I hope you guys kind of understand, kind of get it. Um, I don't really know what, what more to really say about it. It's, it's just a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, and it's fantastic that it's lasted this long. And I hope you know, that Chris is able to hand it down within his family and keep it in the family because it's that beautiful of a razor and it's, it's heirloom quality and I don't see it ever, ever running into issues to where that he would have problems with it. I mean, unless he like completely dropped it and dinged up one of the doors or something like that, so, which I don't think Chris would do. And I sure as hell hope I don't jinx myself and do that. So, kind of an update in terms of the way things are going. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to take you on another ride with me. And we'll probably recap the timeless. Probably won't be as long. I'm keeping the, the video longer um, for this one. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of my commute and how lucky I am. Um, but the timeless razor tomorrow, it's going to be on deck. Um, spoiler alert, it's going to be the last Bluebell soap, and then I'm done with the Utah tour, so to speak. I'm going out of town, so I'll be up camping in the mountains, hopefully where it's cooler. Um, this campground is, uh, it used to be once upon a time a KOA. I've never been to it as it was when it was a KOA, but it's high, it's higher up in the Uinta Mountains, um, but they actually do have a pool. And to be honest with you, my son's been doing swimming lessons this summer, and they're during the work week, so I'm not able to see him. So I'm looking forward to, even though we're camping, to be up there in the mountains and put him in a pool and kind of experience that, because um, I think that would be neat to see the progress that he's made. And plus, we want to get um, my daughter in the water more. Um, it's been enough time now post her surgery, you know, we just got to put the earplugs in and she can now get in the pool. So we, we went and bought a, a, a life jacket for her designed for kids her age to ensure that their head is pretty much always above water. Um, so looking forward to that and giving her that opportunity um, to get into the water. So I mentioned, you know, how hard our water is, um, and my son has really, really bad eczema. See, there's like my first lane change. <laughs> um, so he has really bad eczema, and 
it's it's pretty pretty unfortunate. And we've been working with this dermatologist, and we've got him on a pretty good lotion regimen, I think. But the problem is, is that it has a steroid in it, and it can thin the skin. So we're trying to only use it on flare-ups, and then we're trying to use a thicker, um, well, what's the name of it? It comes in a tub of lotion. We're trying to use that on a daily basis. But the doctor actually recommended that I probably get a, a water softener. Um, and I'm, I gotta be honest with you, one of the thoughts that went through my head, aside after the sticker shock of realizing how expensive those things can be, was, um, what am I, what's it gonna do to my lathering? I mean, some people say that it makes it, it use soft water, they can lather anything. I'm nervous that, that is it gonna change the way that I currently shave? I guess time will tell. So probably in the next month or so, I'm probably going to have to go over to Lowe's and fork over the money and buy that. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to install the darn thing because I have no idea how to do that. I've never installed one. I've never had a water softener, so I don't fully understand the way that's going to work. Um, but I'm coming up on to work. You probably can't see it, but out over here is the golf course. Um, so I look out my office window at that golf course all day instead of working. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I should. Um, but they offer great rates to our employees so we can go over there and, and golf at a good rate. Sometimes on my lunch hour I'll even go over and hit golf balls. So, um, got a badge in. But, so that's, that's the that's the gist of everything for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was something a little bit different, a little bit change of pace. Um, I figured it was safe to just talk, like I said. I hope you guys uh, can come join us at theshavingcadre.com. We're growing. Um, the content has just boomed lately. I've really been impressed with that, and I've also really enjoyed it because it means that you guys, the users, as well as us, the users, are getting, are really just enjoying spending time here, which means a lot to me, you know, and I know it means a lot to, to Chris and Dave, because they want to, uh, they, we all want to be able to provide a good place for everyone, so I'm at work, I'm in my parking stall, so come and join us, I'm going to head into the office, I'll get this uploaded fairly quickly, reach out and join. And tomorrow, we'll do the same thing with the timeless, but I'm probably going to pause you guys when I get to a red light. I won't have as much to talk about tomorrow on the timeless. So, have a good day, everyone.